Well, guess what? We have an AI problem. When AI first became capable of generating images, it was pretty obvious that the images were fake. There was just some weird stuff happening. Fingers were wrong. You could just look at them and just say, nope, I'm gonna have nightmares about this actually. <laughs> Those times are done. We are at the point now where AI photography, AI images, AI videos are indistinguishable from real life. And that's a problem. I mean, look at this picture. That didn't happen. That can happen. <laughs> Those Northern Lights in Los Angeles cannot happen like that. And yet people post stuff like this and get shared and go viral and earn money all from something that is faked. And I don't know about you, but that really infuriates me as a photographer who gets out there and tries and chases and works hard and works to get the image that I have in mind. And when I don't get it, I feel like I missed it. Whereas I could just sit at home and type on my keyboard and say, I want to see the Northern Lights over Los Angeles like they would look in Alaska. And boom, there it is, a realistic image that looks like it actually happened. I think we just have to accept that this is going to be a part of our existence as photographers. This is going to be something that we deal with. We're going to have this competition from these, I'm going to call them basement dwellers who don't want to go outside and do the work, but are going to create images that fool a large percentage of the public into thinking that they've captured something one of a kind. And I think there's a certain responsibility that falls upon us as a photographer to say, you know what, the, the images that I produce are authentic, they're genuine, they came from me and my camera and my desire to adventure and go out and find the beauty in this world and bring it back to you. And I think that our audience is gonna resonate with that. I think over time, they're gonna smarten up to the technology that's out there and have a little bit of skepticism. When they see an image that just blows their mind, my hope is that there's gonna be this thought of like, wait a minute, this might not be real. I believe that as landscape photographers, we need to create images that really show the area as it was. And if we didn't get the exact sky we wanted, cool, make a plan and go back on another time and hope that it is right. It's just so easy and so lazy to fake images these days. Now, what about composites and sky replacements and all of that stuff? I don't know, I'm not the guy to make all the rules on this. From, for me personally, yeah, I've done composites and it makes sense sometimes when you just can't get the exposure right. Your camera is a tool, the tool to portray a reality that you are seeing in front of you. And if the technology doesn't allow you to get that in one exposure, yeah, shoot the foreground, shoot the sky, expose for each of them and blend them together. In my opinion, that's still a photograph. But when we completely change the sky or add things that weren't there, or completely generate an image of the place on our laptops, I think we've crossed lines and I'm not okay with it. I'm not gonna do it. I don't know if you will, and I know that others will. And the thing is, the more that others do it, the more that the average viewer out there is gonna see those images and have their bar raised on what a photograph should look like. And as that bar raises, other photographers are gonna try to meet it and they can't meet it with their cameras because it's just impossible to create things that never happened and can't happen. So I think unless a few of us just say, you know what, I am not going to step into the world of AI image generation. I'm gonna stay old school. I'm gonna create images with my camera and I'm going to put it all together with my brain and create the images as I see it. I'm gonna go out and explore the world and find amazing places and photograph them and bring them back to my fans. I think we're gonna succeed. I really believe that people are smart and the more and more AI images that they see, I hope that they start to realize what's real and what's not. I don't know. I do know that we're up against it, especially as these tools get more and more advanced. I wanted to test it, which is really what inspired this whole video. I went on to Grox AI and said, generate an image of the Northern Lights in Joshua Tree National Park. And look what it did. It just blows my mind. Obviously, these are lights that can't happen in Joshua Tree National Park. I compared this against my real image. And yeah, I mean, if, some, if two people were to look at each image and say which one's better, they're probably gonna choose the AI image. And that just makes me sad. So I don't know, I kind of feel like I'm ranting now, but I would just ask that as a photographer, you stay authentic, you put in the work, 
you learn your camera and you use the tools that you have to create images that really reflect our world. And yeah, our world can be absolutely stunningly beautiful. It's just, we've got to put in the work to go out there and catch it. And so many people are out there doing it and doing a great job of it. I'm just concerned that this new tool is going to tap into the inherent laziness of human beings and really make our jobs as photographers a lot harder. But I'm not gonna stop. I'm gonna keep going out there. My trusty 5D Mark IV and I are gonna be out there. I hope to see you out there just creating images that are real and that bring wonderment and awe to people without deceiving them. These AI photographs are deception, pure deception. There's no other way to put it. I'm not gonna be one of those guys who deceives. I won't do it. So I don't know if you are on board with that or not. Let me know in the comments, subscribe to the channel if you'd like, and I hope to see you out there shooting.